Hey guys, Matt here today, and today we start the book of Romans. And I am actually teaching the book of Romans in, in uh, one of the places that I teach. And I'm going through it at a relatively quick pace because they're, they're younger believers. And uh, so you may, some people will preach through Romans and they'll spend years and years and years, and that's justified. It's, there's a lot going on in the book of Romans. I'm not going to do that. Uh, I'm going to go through this eh, somewhat quick, um, just because I, I don't want to spend that much time in one book, uh, because I, I'll be moving on to a new book soon. So, anyways, the book of Romans is, is many, many people's favorite book in the Bible. Uh, it's hard to say which book is your favorite, but a lot of people have held out Romans and said that's that's the most important book it's certainly it's certainly the longest letter that Paul wrote it's uh, you could say it's the most systematic uh, he he deals with the gospel uh, the power of the gospel the wrath of God revealed to those who uh, aren't obeying the gospel now and the wrath that's to come and uh, how we're justified and how none are good and and how it's all by faith and it's just it's a Glorious, glorious book. Glorious book. What about the Jewish nation? What about us? How do we? How are we grafted in? And then how do we live after we've been saved by this gospel? All of these things and much, much more in the book of Romans. And today, when I start out today, I, I just want to start with verse 1. And verse 1 goes like this. Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle, comma, set apart for the gospel of God. And it goes into verse 2. Verse 2 talks about the gospel which he promised before, and we'll get into that tomorrow. But today I just want to talk about uh, th this, this concept of being called, and, and why was Paul called? Why was it so important that he was called? Uh, when was he called? If you're in Christ, when were you called? Why is it so important? Why is calling? Why is election? Why is predestination? Why is that so important? I'm going to look at that today, uh, and then we'll revisit this as we go through because this will come back throughout the book of Romans. Uh, I think that when we think of predestination, uh, election, predestination, foreknowledge, these types of words that, that all mean that God has preordained who's going to be saved and who's not, this is a big, big concept. Uh, it, it, it appears the words chose or chosen or election or predestined those that that, that flavor of, of of grouping of words shows up at least 60 times in in uh, the new testament at least 60 times it actually shows up more than that but 60 times 61 times in regards to salvation and it's it seems to be a divisive issue with a lot of people and i think it's because uh a lack of understanding or poor teaching on the subject. Uh, what I mean is, it's easy to get proud or uh, uh, brag, you know, braggadocious about, oh, I'm one of the elect. But if you're really one of the elect, that's that's not the attitude you have, right? Paul will deal with that in Romans 11, uh, and then and the other ditch would be those that can't accept it, those that struggle with that, those that think, oh, that's not fair and they try to change it around. They try to do gymnastics with the Word of God. Uh, that's not good either. We're going to let it stand. Let the Word of God stand. He certainly doesn't need my help. Just going to go through. Uh, but today I want to talk about why is it so important that Paul was called to be an apostle. What is an apostle? An apostle is one, he's a messenger for the king, right? He's a messenger of extraordinary status. And Paul is chosen by God to be a messenger for the king, King Jesus. Why is that so important? Well, there's a lot of reasons. First of all, logistically, if Paul's writing letters to correct false teaching, and just to encourage people to uh, lay out a systematical theology like he does in Romans, all of these things, it's important to know that he's really an apostle of God because all of these things, even the things that seem difficult, they're not really from Paul anyways, they're from God. Uh, why is it also important that he was called? Because 
if Paul decided to be an apostle of God, which doesn't make any sense anyways, he would get part of the glory. If, if Paul came to Christ because of his knowledge, his own decision, his own will, then who would get the glory for that? Well, Paul would get part of the glory for that, but that's not how salvation works. God chose Paul so that God's word would come through Paul. God chose Paul so that God would get all the glory because that's what God does. God's in the glory business and he's worthy. Sometimes people struggle with that. They think it's narcissistic or something silly like that. Ah, but they don't know God. God's worthy. God is holy. God is unlike any other creation, any other person. He's never been created. He's God. He's eternal. He's not like man, only a little bit better. No. He's completely unlike anyone or anything. He's holy. He's righteous. He's almighty. He's powerful. He's sovereign. And he deserves all the glory. That's why God does the choosing. So God chose Paul. And the question is, when did he choose Paul? Hmm. Well, you might say, on the road to Damascus, right? Right? Well, not really. Let's go to Galatians 1 real quick. Galatians 1, I'll start in 11, just because this kind of gives a little bit of the backdrop. Here's Paul uh, talking to the Galatians. He says, For I would have you know, brothers, that the gospel that was preached by me is not man's gospel. No, it's not man's gospel because he's an apostle of the Lord. For I did not receive it from any man, nor was I taught it, but I received it through a revelation of Jesus Christ. Ah. For you have heard of my former life in Judaism, how I persecuted the church of God violently and tried to destroy it. And I was advancing in Judaism beyond many of my own among my people, among all his contemporaries. He was the shining star of Judaism. So extremely zealous was I for the traditions of my fathers, but, verse 15, but, but when he who had set me apart before I was born, and who called me by his grace, was pleased to reveal his son to me in order that I might preach him among the Gentiles. When did Paul get called? It wasn't on the road to Damascus. That's when he realized the call. Paul was called before he was born. Paul was called when he was, he was set apart before he was born in his mother's womb. How about us? Is that, is that just for the super apostle Paul? How about us? When, if you're in Christ, when were you chosen? You notice how I said that because I didn't say, when did you decide to follow Christ? When did you receive Christ? Well, those are, those are, you could ask that, but if you go deeper, in, in Ephesians 1, 4, it says, we were chosen before the foundation of the world. Isn't that something? Chosen, God, if you're in Christ, if you're really in Christ, you were chosen by Him before the foundation of the world. Why is that so important? So He gets all the glory. That's why. And he deserves all the glory. It wasn't some great decision. We'll revisit this in Romans 3. Paul will, will, will drive this point home a little bit further. But as far as Romans 1, why is it so important that Paul was called? Because God gets all the glory. Because Paul's going to be speaking some heavy, heavy truths. And we got to realize it's not really from Paul, it's from God. When was he called? Ah, he was called just like us before the foundation of the world. Isn't that something? Called before the foundation of the world. God is sovereign. God has everything figured out already. That bothers some people. It doesn't bother me at all. It makes me feel extremely humble and very grateful that he would choose a person like me. Or that he would choose a person like Paul. Think about this. Paul was chosen. Paul was set apart in his mother's womb. What for? Set apart for the gospel of God. To preach the gospel. 
But wait a minute, if God's sovereign, why in the world would God let Paul persecute the church? Think about that. That's, that's amazing, isn't it? Why would God allow us to live totally wretched, depraved lives before we finally get saved? Why? So he gets all the glory. Think about Paul persecuting Christians, murdering Christians, right? People, people didn't even want to be around Paul. Uh, listen to this. It says, when I received it, he says, and, and, and when God called me by his grace, when he set me apart before I was born, and he was replete, when he was pleased to reveal his son to me in order that I might preach him among the Gentiles, I did not immediately consult with anyone, nor did I go up to Jerusalem to those who were apostles before me. But I went away into Arabia and returned again to Damascus. He went away, spent some time with the Lord. Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem. He spent about the same time the apostles spent with the, risen, with the Lord, but he was likely with the risen Lord. Verse 18, Then after three years I went up to Jerusalem to visit Cephas and remained with him fifteen days. But I saw none of the other apostles except James, the Lord's brother. In what I am writing to you, before God, I do not lie. This is important. Verse 21, Then I went into the regions of Syria and, and Cilicia, and I was still unknown in persons to the church, in the churches of Judea that are in Christ. They only were hearing it said, listen to this, He who used to persecute us is now preaching the faith he once tried to destroy. And they glorified God because of me, Paul says. Why did God allow Paul to persecute the church? So at just the right time, God would make Paul's election sure. He would make it uh, complete. He would bring it to fruition. He would save Paul on that road to Damascus, right? Even though he chose him before the foundation of the world, he would make it a reality, and he would wait until Paul did all of these things so that Paul could be completely broken, completely humble, to realize what a wretch he was, the chief among all sinners, as any of us could say, and then so God could get all the glory. Because when people heard that this one who was persecuting the church was now preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, the same Jesus he previously wanted to kill, oh, that's amazing! And that gives God glory. When people hear that you got saved, if you were like me, well, we're, we're all wretches. We'll get into that in chapter 3. What happens when people say, oh, he's preaching the gospel now? That's insane. That's glorious. That gives God all the glory. Paul, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel, which God promised beforehand, called by Jesus Christ. Why? For God's glory. That's how we start the book of Romans. Peace.